Alrighty, my dudes, welcome to the uh, competition finalist results for the March competition. So I apologize to anyone who has been uh, kind of waiting on me and has been confused over how this video was supposed to be done. Um, the video competition should have been probably pronounced a little bit easier for you guys. Basically, what I was asking was um, for you guys to send in the competition results to me through my Discord, and I would show them in a video. This was supposed to be done a while ago. What happened was, as you guys might know, I ended up totaling my Volkswagen, and I had to get a new car, and I've been doing a lot of work to that car to get it road legal, to get it registered, but because of Corona, it has been very difficult. As soon as I sat down to finally make some recordings of this video, um, my building manager contacted us through email to notify us that, uh, well, guess what? Our storage space isn't ours anymore, and we have less than 30 days to get it out. I have a lot of pro audio equipment, at least $80,000 worth, that is being stored in that building. Those items are too large to just fit in here. So I'm kind of in a position of being fucked right now in the asshole. So that's what's been going on. I've been trying to resolve and clean up space in my apartment to store some of this equipment until I can find a proper free storage area, which luckily I have. So my time has been very much so consumed. So I must apologize for you guys. That's my rationality. However, I'm still at fault for promising this and not delivering the video on time. But knowing me, that's something I need to change. <laughs> Alrighty, my dudes. So the first candidate is what you're seeing right here. This is Arkansas, Missouri, number 32. So before I go any further into detail, not all the logos spawned in correctly on this unit. So in order for you to be able to see this unit properly in all its glory, I had to modify some of the decals. TK sent me the decals for the most part, but unfortunately, it would appear that the side logos did not get to load in correctly. So, I don't know if you guys know who TK0326 is, but he is actually a pretty cool guy. He's an older gentleman who actually used to work, he's no longer with them anymore, but he used to work with Arkansas and Missouri Railroad back then. So he actually created the, the engine that he used to run, and he told me to say this statement directly. This is what he told me to read out. This is Arkansas Missouri Railroad number 32. Uh, this is an AM Alco C424 BLD A465. In the real world, this locomotive was used on AM's L050 and L051 local jobs, and that's originating out of Springdale, Arkansas. He would be assigned to those two jobs and work on this locomotive quite some time over the years as he worked for the company. The locomotive also does side work on the main company in the locomotive shop as an RCL or box. This C424 in particular was one of the heaviest ever manufactured, weighing in at about 265,675 pounds. Holy shit. That's actually quite heavy for a unit of this size. Compared to a regular C424, which would weigh normally about 258,650. That's actually quite heavy as well, but I don't know. I, I'm not too experienced with locomotives, but that is a huge weight difference, like a good nearly 10,000 pounds heavier. Um, the extra weight added in, as an experiment in 1965, and it proved to be successful with higher traction effort, but was never put into mass production. All right, so we're going to go into detail per capita. That is the first category described. D TK has done a phenomenal job with these units. You know, TK's units are very optimized. They have a lot of exterior detail and yet retain such a simplicity at the same part. And TK really deserves a lot of credit for this. The guy pretty much perfected it on most of the servers that he played on. So in order to calculate most of this, we're going to use my E2 uh, CPU time calculator. Uh, that'll be a good reference for us to see. And I'm going to do this for everyone, as well as the amount of E2s. So we're on the private server right now, so we're only able to view what we have. This is literally all the E2s TK is using on this unit. Now, I, I, you got to give him a round, of applause, a round of applause when it comes to that. Because if you can see right there, that's all it is. 
See? That's all it is. That's all it is right there. I'm actually not entirely sure of exactly how this thing uh, operates in terms, of the, in terms of the controls. TK told me very basically how it worked. You've got your main start, MU, control, bell cut in, horn cut in, and headlight breaker. My FPS is, well, I'm going to be honest with you guys. My machine, which I described in a video I did a while ago, you can check it out. I'm probably going to put the link up in the description. Um, but, or maybe not, who knows. Probably won't. But um, I don't have very good single core performance, which I don't know if you guys realize this. Gary's mod only really uses single core. And maybe for rendering it can use multi-core, but for the most part it's all singly based CPU-wise. And now I don't have very good single core performance. So my frame rate never really dips below 20, but I can guarantee you right off the bat, getting above 100 with anything out is actually somewhat difficult. So if anyone was interested in what that is, that's why my uh, FPS is never really good when you see me streaming. You know, I'm always limited as to what I can do. And that's just how my life is. It sucks big PP, but you know what? I live with it. So that's just how it works. So I can try to get my FPS up a little bit more, but I, I mean, I'm getting about 60, 62 ish. That's pretty much the best I'm going to get, to be honest. Um, as you can see, he's integrated literally everything into pretty much like a couple of E2s. And, and that is like the king. This guy. The, T, you guys can all learn something from TK when it comes to this. We'll go ahead and we'll cut our stuff in here. Oh, we don't want control yet. We don't want that yet. We'll just start the thing up and you and we'll do control. Now, TK is one of the few people I know that still actually use regular first-generation RLC. I believe it just uses RLC, not RLC-AB. I only know two people in particular, besides TK, who still do that. And a lot of them deserve equal credit. Oh yeah, I forgot. This thing has the auto break, so... Wouldn't be wise to do that. Alright, so that's forward, reverse, forward. So right now we're in idle, so we're going to check our timings right here. And look at that, guys. 183. Holy shit. Fucking hell. That is extremely optimized. That is, like, better than anything I have ever seen, ever. Holy shit. Fuck. Well, let's take it out. Let's see how it goes. We're just gonna go ahead and parent this dude. Well, hopefully they... Well, yeah, I should have realized that the... Well, that was to be... Oh my god, my hollows just utterly destroyed themselves. Destructly. Um, wow. Okay. This is not good. Oops. Oh my fucking god. God damn. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, oh. Hello. Hello, Mr. Hollows. Yeah, so it turns out my body has collisions enabled. So that's kind of like a dumbass moment for me to realize. So we'll just kind of like abstractly put this little dude right there. And we'll just parent him right to that guy. Oh. Do I got it? Okay. Yeah, I got it. Okay. We're good. Okay, those are disabled. Okay. Let's give this a shot. Oh, I keep on using older controls for this. With the bell going and everything, it go jumps up to most about like, like maybe 200. Just about there. It handles well. It looks really good. It's really, and I mean extremely optimized per capita. TK, you've chipped off a lot of the boxes here. I want to hear the rest of the engine sounds. I'm just going to rev it in neutral here. The thing about RLC is that the sounds are only so good due to the fact that all it does is change the pitch. TK has done the most he can with this setup. The sounds aren't really that good, to be honest with you, TK, but, I mean, to be fair, the realism factor of this is a good 7 out of 10. 
from what I can hear sound wise, I mean the sounds, there's not really much going on for sounds, but in all honesty, oh, realism factor is a good, I'd say 8 out of 10, and the reason I dock it there is because the sounds are not the greatest, but that's just due to the limitations of RLC. That's all it is. Optimization per capita is a good 10 out of 10. I don't think anyone else is going to come close to you, TK. This is phenomenal. And the, you know, so yeah. And the third category of, um, is the spot on realism. I mean, you've got all checks. In terms of one to one compared to the real thing, I mean, you worked on the real thing. You sent me exactly what it looked like. You gave me all the details describing it. So. You've even did the front boxes, the ditches, everything. So that realism is a good 9 out of 10. The only reason I'm docking you there is because, um, well, I can't really dock you there on it, but the only reason I'm docking that is simply because I, um, I can't see some of the stuff and the wipers. Actually, I can't see the wipers. I don't know what's going on with that. Maybe they just exceeded, but 9 out of 10. Very good. I haven't really... Well, I'd say on realism, it's a good 10 out of 10, man. I mean, compared to the real thing, it's it's spot on. I can't really see anything that would be off on position and factor to the real thing. The only thing I might say is maybe some of the texturing, but I mean, hey, it's Gary's mod. I mean, you can only go so far with this shit. So you've done phenomenal, man. You deserve a lot of credit for what you've done. Alrighty, next on our list is a is uh, TTS A100 to A160. It stands for... Uh, TTS is Tornado uh, Dude Films. It stands for uh, Tornado's Train uh, Shunting. Um, we're going to open up the file here. Huh. Okay, that's not right. Let me check to see what the fuck is going on. Okay, so after some poking around and shit, it seems like the file's not opening here. So I'm not going to disqualify him, but we're just going to, because that wouldn't be really cool. I'm not sure if he's online or not, so I'm just going to go ahead and um, excuse him from the competition. That's not really fair for him. It seems like I can't seem to decode it. So, we're going to skip over Tornado for right now. I apologize, my dude. I know for a fact you were really interested in doing this. So, we're going to go straight to the next candidate here. Alrighty. So, right here is uh, Snowy. This is his competition result entries. This is Snowy's unit. It is uh, all 620 to 640. It is Brazilian-owned railroad. Or, it's a Brazilian railroad owned by... I assume that says Ramunic Logistica. I, I, I probably butchered that. I apologize. Basically, it means America Atlanta Logistica, I guess. The real-life counterpart will be showed right here. Um, and he gave me the, dupe, the Advanced Dupe 2 file for it. So, basically, this is, uh, I guess, the first PT2 unit that we're going to be reviewing. So, first off, spot to spot from what I can see. Uh, it, it might just be me, but it looks a little bit more orangish than red, and I think that's because it's weathered, which makes sense, but in the photo that I've been sent here, it looks like it's red, and I guess that's only due to one factor, the fact that it's raining, so, you know, red raining will turn a, a nice sun-faded orange back to a nice red because it helps, uh, you know, applies a coating of water. Anyhow, from what I can see, he did the logos pretty spot on from what he was able to do. The all logos are more to an oval, but, I mean, there's no real S-prop oval. But there's probably some magic you can do with hollows to help ma manipulate them to do that. But as far as I can see, there's a couple of logos that he has popped on there that this one doesn't have in particular. Like the front logo, which is kind of a bitch to bend, so I'm not going to give him that. Other than that, there is stairs or um, ladder steps of a weird non-matching color. So, one-to-one -one counterpart, I gotta rate this a good six to seven out of five, like six and a half out of, out of ten, my bad. So, six and a half out of ten. You did good, though, given the materials given to you. Just a heads up, with hollow, you can modify the S-plates right here to go to an oval shape if you know how to do it. And that way, 
you can modify it to meet up to factors more or less. So we've got our starter. We got all our switches right here. I can't remember how the fuck to start these damn things. So I think we got to go ahead and look up for switch. Okay. Our gen field brake engine run isolation primer toggle uh, fucking. Leave it to me to not know how the fuck this works. So this is why we read manuals, kids. I fucked up. You're not supposed to have that on. So. Oh. Forgot you gotta hold it. Okay, don't know what the fuck happened to the sounds there. That's pretty cool. A brake cut in, gen field. There's the engine. Hello. Yeah, I remember PT2. So the good thing about PT2 is at idle, it's not so good at idle. Um, yeah, that's just PT2. I don't see any other reason why that's using so much. And it doesn't seem to want to tell me how many E2s are on this thing, which is pretty concerning. So it says I have about 34, so let me go ahead and find the E2 finder. See exactly how many E2s are on this guy. So that's to be pretty much expected. I mean, you got wipers, you've got E2. Okay, not actually all of them didn't load in. There we go. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, that's that's typical. 34 E2s per unit is quite typical. And using Titus's uh, or Monk's plugs, those are pretty cool too. So overall, it's not bad at all. You got your uh, what the hell is this thing? Oh, it's uh, what's the name? Ballistics plow and stuff. Nice. And these guys are... Well, you there you go. So that's all you got. Alright. Not bad. You got all your stuff running here. The thing about PT2 is I don't like it only because it does use a lot of CPU utilization, as you can see right there. Just idle, it's using quite a bit. I mean, it's probably less than 90% of what's being calculated, although the unit seems to be using quite a bit in standalone components, which is probably due to the factors of these E2s you see here. Monk's exhaust tends to use a little bit, although it's not that bad. Locos uses a lot, and that's just because it's an EGP. You can't blame Locos for this. Locos is pretty good in terms of optimization for an EGP system. And you've got Carbar Coupler and the RLC PT2 stand, which is using what the fuck? Almost 100 CPU timing. I can imagine that it goes way up. Uh, you know, honestly, for what it is, it's not too bad. That's just typical of PT2, and it's E2s. So it's just, you got to have a certain amount of updating. And the exhaust that Monk's E2 seems to work quite well on here. And you can see it spikes up there on the screen when you're notching up, and the reason behind that is because PT2 is actually pretty good at calculating CPU timing and only when it needs it. Problem is, it tends to work in its favor, but not all the time. It does have its moments where it uses it too much, especially on when you're pulling large heavy consists as long cars. You have a lot of stuff moving. You got a lot of stuff to calculate. But it does do it better than Sapphire, which is my edit to PT1 does. So I, I really can't bash on PT2. this unit, so he deserves some credit there. Oh, is that... I have to sit in here, don't I? 
Oh, I remember. Yeah, you gotta point at it and move your mouse wheel. That's how it works. I forgot about that. That's how this works. And I believe if you press it, it shuts it off, right? Yeah. Sploit is pretty cool for that reason. Although, is it actually emitting a light beam? Not sure if it is or if it isn't. I don't really like Sploit because it does exactly what my E2 does, except my E2 does a little bit more. But the thing is, a Sploit is it's simple light. That's what it stands for. And Monk deserves a lot of credit for that. It is quite literally that. So, let's try to drive it. Probably works better if you unfreeze it. What's up, bud? Cat really wants to. I mean, it drives like PT2. We don't really need to fuck with it to really know how it drives. So, I've already given the rating for how I feel of the, of the unit as a uh, as what it is um, in terms of one to one comparison. So, what I think of it right now in terms of handling is pretty much what I think of PT2. It's like a good maybe seven out of ten. It's not perfect, but then again, you know, Gary's mod limitations really make a bitch of us all. In terms of optimization per capita, PT2 really isn't that great. Um, because the E2s that correspond with PT2 really put a dent in the utilization. PT2 itself may not be horrible, but the E2s that run alongside PT2, I mean, we're just sitting here idle and every now and then it's popping up into the 1000s. I mean, that's normal with Sapphire units, but we're talking about the entire fucking locomotive with Sapphire versus, you know, like, uh, just a couple of E2s on the unit itself. But, I, regardless to what I said, it's not too bad. So, optimization per capita, I give it a 5 out of 10. Overall, not bad, my dude. You did very good. I'd be proud of yourself if I were you. Next up on the competition is Lucky. Lucky, thank you, dude. He sent me something that's actually pretty good. My competition submission, unit numbered, is numbered between 2030 to 409. It's an Amtrak F40PH, full width crow body, model, 40 passenger, HEP equipped. Thank you, Lucky. Detail is appreciated in the description. You've given me that. I'm very happy about that. And he gave me a custom startup procedure, which is nice. Amtrak is a railroad serviced into... Sur oh, well, we know what Amtrak is, but in case everyone is wondering, Amtrak is basically a government uh, facility, or it was a government-contracted company originally, at least at startup in the late 60s, that originally picked up the failing passenger service from other locomotive companies at the time. Nowadays, they're independently owned, but back then they were governmentally provided and funded and also contracted directly by the government. So he told me that uh, the startup procedure is custom, and he also went ahead and gave me a list of all the custom stuff. It has an emergency light when it throws up. So middle switch is HEP, up, down. Sorry, this paragraph was wrong. <laughs> ah, that's nice. All right. Let's see what he prepared for me. I'm actually very curious. Ooh. Whoa, my frames. Okay, just for a split second there. Property managers and builders. No need to cut corners with storage and organization options. What the fuck? Closet Made is now available at Lowe's. Not only is Closet Made the number one brand among builders, but it also features the newest in closet designs. Why the hell am I listening buyers. to an ad? The perfect combination of storage and organization for all types of spaces and budgets. Closet Made systems are easy oh, to install. Oh, it's using Jay's Motorola radio. Jay went all out when he made property. this radio. We're open at 6 a.m. and you can pick up curbside. It's fast and convenient. U.S. only. So it seems like Lucky, for the most part, assembled a stand using props only. God, what the fuck? I guess there's no way to turn it down, so that's okay. Alright, I do like what he did, so let's give it a good one-to-one -one comparison with the real thing, or we should probably start off with optimization per capita. Right now we're sitting idle at 300 CPU. That's not too bad. I might as well check cons. I normally don't check cons in this, but I'm going to start checking them. So we've got six cons here, so we've got what? There's two up here. we got a plug, which is to be expected. There's something else over here. Oh, he actually put the RLC there. Yeah, you got to have the RLC parented. And we got the truck, which is... I'm sorry, what do I see that's over here as well that's welded? 
something else here. I, oh, it's oh, it's Fender Bender. Okay, that's fine. And we've got another socket. Okay, my cat's back in here. What are you doing, bud? Ow! I just ripped, nearly ripped my nail off because I just bashed it against my chair. And my cat's fat ass is accumulated in his uh, stupid little bed thing. I'm going to take a photo of this and probably post it in the video. Because this is some good shit right here. If it'll let me post it. There we go. That's my view. You'll hopefully see it. <laughs> Anyhow, so yeah, so I obviously cons are pretty spot on. I'm not really checking cons that much in this competition because I would expect anyone who enters to really understand the concept of that. I'm noticing the fans look like they're custom. They're not the original fans. So I'm wondering if Lucky modified my Danny 2. Got like a little beacon right there. Overall, I'm impressed with the way it looks. I'm impressed with the skin. My FPS is extremely high with the skin. I don't really like... Um, what the hell is it? I'm missing a model pack for the actual logos here, which is unfortunate. I'm not going to count that against Lucky because, you know, it's not his fault. I'd say let's turn it on and check it out because I know that these units are really, uh... Oh, nice. I've, I never really used Jay's radio. So I assume these are for the actual... Oh, okay. So I assume these are for the actual lights or something. Well, maybe it's not going to work if we don't have power, so... Maybe we should, uh... Oh! Simple little light. Okay. So it's on right now. We've got our main light. And he just told me they're right there. And that's the rear light right there, as you can tell. I do like the tint. The hue is kind of interesting. Man, Engine auto start clear, and right the activation. I do like that. He's got lights that come on right there. That's really cool. And it sounds like we're using a version of... Well, the sounds for the actual engine are defaulted, so that I'm wondering if it is PT, right? We are running Platinum Beta, so Lucky is actually running Platinum, pretty cool. Corners are, Lucky normally keeps his bell to alt, I'm wondering if he put a, a bell down beneath. Oh. Which which button was it? I just pushed it. Hmm. Um, hold on, I'm looking right here. Unit uses ATS window lean. Looking to the sharp right while in the seat. No, oh, that's some cool ass motherfucking shit, Lucky. Nice. I'm surprised I've never thought about that. That is nice, dude. Good for you. What E2 is that? That is phenomenal. Dude, I gotta replicate that with my seat. There's no reason I shouldn't. That is phenomenal, dude. You give deserve a lot of credit. And when I'm leaning like that, does that affect my CPU? Holy shit, it does. The leaning has to calculate, I assume. For a PT2 unit, or for a PT1 unit, it is running pretty high, but I mean, a lot of it's probably due to the fact that it's not moving. PT1 normally calculates a little bit more effectively when it's moving. The sound's just kind of skipping right there. Frozen? Oh, just not forward. Uh, my utilization just went up a shitload. I'm not really moving. Oh, because my trucks move. That would be it. I probably have to refresh PT1. PT1 has this weird little insignificant bug where you've got to, like... There we go. That engine. sound I like a lot. Overall, okay, so Lucky, one-to-one -one comparison. I do like what you did. I'm not very big on the old Grove models, only because these models are, well, they're relatively shitty in my opinion. 
Uh, no offense to you, Grove. I know you worked your ass off on them, and I don't think I could have done a better job, especially on this particular model, but uh, compared to the other stuff you put out recently, I don't really like these particular models. I do like the small things you've done. You put an air conditioner on it, you've done all of these other little things, and the real thing, spot on to the real thing, I mean, there's a little bit of insignificant differences with them, but, I mean, one-to-one -one comparison, Here's what we're going to do. Optimization per capita, I give you a 4 out of 10. I'm sorry, but PT1, this thing's running very high CPU-wise, and that's, for PT1, is a little unacceptable for me. But you've got a lot of detail on here that is running, and you've got a lot of E2 chips from the looks of it. So, you know, i got to give you some slack there. But still, in terms of actual entity count, you know, the one thing I... I really should give you a 5 out of 10, so I'm going to do that because your skin is really optimized. I mean, I'm getting very good FPS. There are some really cool-ass fucking things on here that do have optimization. So, yeah, uh, very unique. Uh, I do got to give you a good... In terms of realism, um, I'd say because there are a couple of insignificant differences between this and the real thing, I give you a good 6 out of 10, maybe 6.5 out of 10. And in terms of engine uh, handling and whatnot, I mean, it's PT-1. Yeah, so PT-1's a little bit in some respects, but it does have some characteristics. I do notice that you have some stuff set up. You have a HEP generator. You have a lot of stuff that you've set up on here to operate, which traditionally won't operate. So I give you a lot of credit. You have an air conditioner in here and everything. So I give you, in terms of realism, a good... Uh, I'd say 6 out of 10. I'm very happy for you, dude. You've come a long way. So, thank you. All right, next up is BCNN 410. So, this is actually uh, Dayton's District Rail Fanner, or DTRP. He actually made this unit. So, here's what he asked me to read out. This is BCNN 410 Operation Lifesaver Skin. Tra stop, trains can't. It was built in 2006 for BCNN 467, and then renumbered and got the OLS text on the side in late 2015. So he has a little backstory behind his unit, um, which is pr pretty cool. And BCNN stands for British Columbia Northern. It's a fictional railroad owned by Dayton, and is set in the modern era of the Pacific Northwest of British Columbia and Alaska due to the merger of Poland and Northern and Alaska and Southern. That's kind of cool. So here's the unit. Um, I gotta make a comment, uh, it's nice, I do like it, but I, right off the bat, I gotta tell you something, personally, between me and you guys, the, the paint scheme gives me, like, kind of a headache. My eyes! It's blue. But then again, this isn't uncommon, a lot of companies would paint their trains this kind of a color, so, that's probably just a me preference. So yeah, I can see you've got FBD down there, a couple other things, that's pretty what the fuck is that? What kind of fucking Sam Hell level Alabama shit? Oh my fuck. What the fuck? There's a baby right there. <laughs> That's some good shit. Okay. You, you deserve some extra points there. I, I didn't actually think someone would do that. Four cons, not bad. CPU utilization at idle is pretty common. It's using about 300. That's pretty average for idle. An icebreaker. A lot of interesting things. I like the antenna placement. I think that's unique. Uh, we got the... F well, it's just a uh, union's model, so... We've got your lights. That's kind of interesting. I've never seen that kind of a setup before. Actually, that looks like it fits, in my opinion. Got the red lamps there. Ditch lights. You've got your hoses. I do like the placement, the, the idea of stop, trains, can't. I mean, that's kind of a simple context that most people really don't think about. The average Joe especially doesn't think about. What are we running off of? We sh it says RLC equipped. What RLC? There's like a shitload of them. Most people like to put RLCs right up front on the nose. Um, some other people will often than not put them on the fuel tank or the back of the locomotive truck. I like to put them either on the back of the fuel tank or the trucks. So I've been doing it on the back of the fuel tank now for some time. But often than not, people will position them a lot of the time, either up front in the nose or right here in the coupler. It really depends on how the person wants to operate. I can't actually see, so we're going to find out here.
Sometimes people will often not also put them back here. Uh, there's a logo there. I don't see anything that represents maybe being installed in the rear right here. Ah, oh, there it is. So we're running beta. Okay. PT1 beta. Okay. Hey, watch out there, buddy. Danger is 600 watts. 600 watts? I thought that meant volts. That's probably just me. Handbrake instructions. Okay. We got a battery knife. On ground reset. We got this guy right here. We've got a... This seems oddly familiar. I wonder if I... May, or had something to do with the Z2. I'm not sure. We'll stop, run, isolation switch. We got a prime. We have a prime system on this. Okay. Case of Minges. It's a fucking chainsaw. Well, that's funny. I don't know if this is working, right? Is this. Oh. Oh. I guess. Uh, I'm not really sure how that's supposed to work. Uh, it's running PT1. PT1 has an issue with. Uh, whoops. Oh, that's kind of anal. The alt button. Okay, so the bell is wired up to shift. But in order to shift, you know, put the. Uh, Put the brake on and off, you gotta use shift. So my bell just kinda comes on whenever I hold that button, so that's a little weird. There you go. Their marker lights front rear, that's kinda cool. Got your cab lights, so that's nice, that's really nice right there. That's not super blinding, that's not obstructive, it's just decent. There's some shimmy. And you've got your actual headlights. We got. Whoops. What the hell did I just push it through the emergency? Was it space? Here, fans. Did I accidentally set my. Oh, I set my dad in. That's not my fault. Whoop. Wrong key. I do like the horn sound a lot. We do have ditch lights. They're really slow ditch lights, but they. Ditch lights nonetheless. I do gotta hand it to you, Dayton. You do have a lot of E2s. Uh, I mean, a lot, but most of those are because of you have texts and stuff. Your CPU timing is uh, a little bit high, but it's not the highest PT1 unit I've seen. Holy shit, I just saw that guy jump up there. When it's moving, it's using a lot. I mean, a lot. Maybe that was just me. Maybe not. I don't know. All right. So from what I can see here, Dayton, uh, representation because it's a you know it's a a unit you've made. I one to one comparison. I definitely or excuse me, optimization per capita. I give it a f three. Out of 10, I'm sorry, man. But there's a lot of unoptimized features on there, and there's not a lot of detail to back up those features. However, I do get to give you props. You've def definitely managed to keep the CPU timing low and idle compared to a lot of other units I've seen. They use a lot. And I'm not going to deny with you, man, some of my units when I made, when I first started and really started making, were really unoptimized. I mean, a lot of them still are. So I can't really ma cast judgment efficiently like that. It's kind of hypocritical. I do got to give you props, though. My FPS was considerably high. I don't mind your paint skin. I mean, your paint skin, your your scheme, excuse me, uh, seems to be quite efficiently uh, clipped on, so that's not a problem. I uh, I do like some of the small quirks. I got to give you credit on the quirks, like the uh, in case of minges. I mean, it's I find that kind of funny personally. So, all right. So the next submission is from Train Ryan. Or Ryan Trains, 1218. My bad. So, his unit submission is an HR616 or MF30C, which is an HR616 trapper, tapper, or draper, taper, whatever the hell you want to call it. It's a unit. Um, so, yeah. His unit uh, number is 2100. 
Uh, the 2100 was mainly made for the CN for long freight, and, you know, you don't really see any of these anymore, but, yeah. So, let's go over what he has. So, first off, he's running Sapphire, so that's why his idle time is extremely low. Um, the Sapphire adjusts itself to be pretty low idle time, if necessary. Look at that, he's got the fuel gauges, he's got a fuel cap, and, uh, oh yeah, on both sides... And I think, oh yeah, you got more fuel for the different sorts of ores of the tank. He put the right trucks on, too. As you can see here, they line right up in the right positions. I really like, I especially like the texturing of the hollow skin. Like, it actually has a grimy, weathery look. Very nice. And the bell is right there. Normally, they'd mount them right there alongside with the horn. So, yeah. And, uh... So, that's what that looks like. Where's the actual RLC? Like, because I would like to see what version of Sapphire he's running. I don't know why it's moving. Oh, yeah, that would do it. There we go. Why the hell is it moving? Huh. Maybe it had something to do with the bodies. Which is actually kind of concerning because, okay, nine cons, that's a little high. A lot of it's stuff that could easily be parented. No offense, but... Oh, oh that's interesting. Huh. It's very interesting. I don't think I've seen a stand like that. Nah, he's got a little bench right there, too. That's cool. And there's, like, newspapers down there. That's a cute detail. I like that. Um, oh yeah, Eve, look at this, there's even an air pipe that goes all the way up forward to the actual cab for the horn, and the bell, that's pretty cool, and it goes all the way back here to where the compressors would be installed and lined up. Uh, I don't see a moving fan, however, I don't see any shafts, so it seems to be pretty traditional. No actual light back here. He did bend the... You did actually clip the actual uh, CM logo, so good for you. Not a lot of people go for that far. I do like the excessive uh, detail right here on the coupler and the rear. It's pretty cool. See, you've got the uh, decals here. Although those could probably be all put in one e too, but I see ya. I got gotcha. ya. I understand. Um. So that's that. That's pretty cool. Okay, so I'm just a little curious, and you've also got the proper ditch lights, because these were set up in a weird manner for ditch lights. That's good. And you get the lights there. Handbrake doesn't work. Okay, well, I'd like to find where the RLC is, and also check the, um... Using an E2 finder to check everything. Okay, so... What do we have here? We have a lot of stuff.
All right, I'll tell you what, my dude. I love the way it sounds. I love the way it looks. But there's a lot of things about it that I'm really not liking. So, let's start with the ratings I have for this thing on a scale of 1 to uh, 0 to 10. In terms of the way it looks and the way it, it represents as the real unit, I definitely got to give that a good 9 out of 10. It looks phenomenal in terms of the actual scoring, in terms of that, but I definitely have to give you guys this, though. It's, um... The optimization is... It's 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 off the charts in terms of CPU utilization. You've gotten that thing really bunched down as optimized as it can go. In terms of E2 timing. But there is an excessive amount of E2s in places that they don't have to be. Like, as an example, you've got Fox's, like, window E2, which, by the way, they ripped off of me, and they didn't even do it correctly. I mean, whoa, 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 whoa. okay. Horn model. Huh. Like, you've got my EMD bell, but... It's not even dinging, it's just there for show. Which defeats the purpose of it, because it's meant to be an all-in-one solution to help reduce clutter and E2s and extra props. But you've got a horn E2 here, you've got a bell that's doing nothing, and I'm just a little confused as to what's going on there. So every single window in this thing has an E2 just to put a hollow, and then you've got a wiper in every single thing, which creates another E2 for every single... So you've got, like... What, 42 E2s? You could easily have 12 E2s for what you got going on here. So all those things that I was describing to you, my dude, can be done through one E2. But besides that, I, I'm definitely pleased by the way it looks. So, optimization, you got a lot of E2s going everywhere. Um, you've got, I don't know what kind of Harry Potter level shit you got going on with the lights, but there should be no justified reason that the, your lights on that unit dropped me down to like near 12 to below 12 FPS. That's like unforeseen. Your cab lights are way too bright, and there's something wrong with that. So, those I really suggest you make adjustments to. And your control layout, like your control stand doesn't work. So, those are like big inefficiencies. Like, I don't I don't get that. So, in terms of optimization, and you have nine cons on stuff that could be easily parented. So, in terms of optimization, um, you've got a lot to go. I'm giving you a three out of ten on this. I'm sorry. But the amount of simple things that need to be done should have been done before CPU timing should have been fixed. In terms of handling, I mean, it's RLC Sapphire 2.9, so the brakes are total shit, and that's due to me making something incorrectly. Oh, no, 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 2.9 fixed the brakes, but it, it, it's got some quirks in it. So your dynamics keep themselves a notch for after you're done with them. That, that is a bug that I did fix, but not till later. So we all know how Sapphire units handle. So, yeah. So handling, I'm going to give you, from the looks of that way that unit was constructed... I'm going to give you a 7 out of 10 because of the um, the way you have things. Like, I had to disable the body, like the collisions on the body, so that's that's not necessarily good. shouldn't have to do that. So anyhow, yeah. All right, next up is Kai and Goat. I don't know why, but the unit turned on when I spawned it. I'm missing textures, so that's why you're seeing the logos missing, in case anyone's interested. Kai and Goat made a unit called, um, I'm trying to view it here, D&E 641. This is post Genzi and Wyoming takeover. D&E is a fake railroad made by Kai Ng, so it's another one of those fake railroads. As you can see, it's clearly a GP30, no dynamics, low profile exhaust. I don't really know if the fans are low profile, I could be mistaken. I do like, I will give him this, extremely simple cab layout. Simple because there's nothing in it. Um, ooh, kind of interesting. Uh, I like the windows, but... So, here's what we got going on. 30 E2s, and as you can see, we're only using about 300 CPU. As you can see, we're running PT Beta. 
hollow stripe. A lot of it's just simple things. There's really nothing in here that makes this any more particularly unoptimized or in a way or that would compromise them. So, it's pretty cool. You got your front headlights. I say it handles just like RLCPT. I do like the skin and especially like the skin because the skin is extremely well optimized. There's a lot of detail per capita on this unit in terms of the skin itself. The fans don't actually work though. And because it's PT1, what the? Oh shit, you just made a lot of clag there. Alright, so what do I think? Okay, so this, I like the way it looks, you know, I'm not gonna lie with you. External detail is nice, but I don't see a lot of small things on it that would really qualify it. I do like the little knockouts for the, um, the markers right here, that's pretty cool. But besides that, I really don't see anything that's wowing me. I mean, anyone can make a really good skin now with the, uh, the what's the name? The, uh, I'm a retard here, I, I, I'm blanking out. Whoa, whoa, what the fuck? There's visors on these windows. Is that, do they actually do that? On the extended cab windows, did they actually put visors there? Or am I having like an LSD drug trip? <laughs> what the fuck? Also, I just noticed that the windows are actually uh, Jazzy's extended window. So that's interesting. Um, I do like the material he used for the actual sidestep here. Like, it's not all just... A lot of people forget to do sub-materialing and it makes things look bad. But, you gotta give it to you, Kang. You got that spot on. So, let's rate this thing. Um, in terms of the way it looks, I think in terms of realism, towards the way it looks, I mean, there's no exact one-to-one, -one, but the simple things that you did are period correct. I just want to check something now. Okay. Okay, there's no dynamic rads, so why I hear dynamic warming up is beyond me. That's just the one thing I wanted to see. So, okay, so... I give you a good... I guess 6 out of 10 for looks. Sorry. I'm sorry, but I love the skin, but there's just not a lot of small things. Like I like I said, guys, I look for the small details that no one else cares about. I do want to see if the trucks move, though. Do we have moving trucks? not. And that is completely understandable. Alright, in terms of handling characteristics, it's PT beta, so it's alright. An optimization per capita. Eh. You know, there's, uh, there's a good chunk of detail on here, but nothing that would really speak and use a lot of CPU. The majority of things actually using CPU timing are the stand, the speedometer, FBD, and RLC PT2. Or PT1, excuse me. So really, it's not using a whole lot. I mean, this is typical for this kind of a unit. And you've got a bell and horny too. So for the most part, seeing about 300 to 200 CPU timing is very average. It's nothing special. However, you do deserve a huge amount of credit for integrating all the shit into pretty much mainly a couple of E2s. And that I applaud you for. Because I have yet to find people who really do that. Like, as you can see, his skin integrates a lot of stuff. Like, as an example, maybe not the headlights, but the headlight bases are integrated. The actual ladder here is integrated. So, thank you. Thank you. Holy shit, thank you. Okay, let me get the actual competition thing out. Let's go next. So, then we got DGL's SD90 Mac. DGL, my dude, you're up. Okay. Okay, 64 A2s. That is pretty high. Look at me. I decided to be a fuckwad and steal one of DG's units because I can't do shit in life. Okay. Um, it would be kind of nice to have anti-dupe steel disabled, but understandable. Have a good day. Okay, I see a lot of... A lot of unnecessary E2s, to be honest. Um, yeah. Definitely think it's a long shot away from what you used to have, DGL, but there's a lot of texturing and stuff on here that's kind of odd. Oh! Okay. <laughs> Bruh. 
break if threatened by retard. Oh my fucking god. Nah, you shit me. That's funny. What the fuck? Double prime over? That's... Markers, okay. Wipers. Uh, gotta give it to you, that, that's a little bit of an interesting wiping pattern. Okay. I, uh, think I've seen everything I need to see. At least your wipers change patterns, so that's kind of cool. Okay, so, uh, the controls are really weird. No offense, TGL. And what version of Sapphire are we running? Oh, I can flip that on again. Okay. Got a clock over there. No smoking. I like that. No smoking. Weird position for a cab light. Sapphire. Okay. Uh, there's multiple flaws with that, my dude. You're running 2.76, and if this is a 710 20 cylinder, this is kind of weird. We're running. I I don't know what to make about this thing, DGL. I uh, it's a little weird in my opinion. Sounds are borked. Uh oh. No idea what the horn button is. Alcohol Holy shit! Three innocent lives, but it's important. What the fuck? Out of all the things I've heard today. Deserve some credit. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you, that's pretty funny. Alright. Alright, I've already calculated what I wanted here. Oh, we got a working fan? Okay. Half of the fan works, but the other half just kind of like. Okay, you got working fans, and I know your trucks work. These are sapphire locomotive trucks. They're not spinning because we're... Okay, yep, they do in fact spin, so that's cool. The old sapphire spinny truck things, so they're not great, but they work. All right, I gotta be honest with you, DGL. Uh, you do have some interesting things on there. I'm gonna give you, in terms of detail, a uh, five out of ten. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You have them really nice E2s on there that help optimize and help show off some interesting features that I haven't really seen in a lot of people's things yet, such as working fans, trucks, etc. But I'm noticing things like improper texturing on those fans that kind of make it look weird and not that great. And also, the way you have your light set up is a little unoptimized. Optimization per capita? Eh, not very good, dude. Uh, you're like in like 3 out of 10. I mean, CPU timing, you're, you're okay-ish. But in terms of overall timing, or in terms of overall... Um, optimization 
you have a lot of E2s that don't need to be, exist. I mean, you literally have over 64 E2s that don't have to be there. You could easily merge that and cut E2s down to 30 to the most, if not 20. Um, that's if you know how to do it. But to say it's not that bad, it's just a little weird looking. In terms of an overall comparison to the real thing, you, you've got a a really weird setup for your RLC going there, and uh, I don't think there's anything realistic to that RLC you have set up. Like I've never heard a 710 sound like a um, a 1010 or whatnot. So I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to rate you in all categories with a four out of ten. I'm sorry. A good 4 out of 10 for everything on that. It's not the most well set up. I'm so, we're going to do Max. Max submitted a GP40. Let's see what it looks like. He's not the only one to submit. Oh, nice. That looks pretty cool. So Max's unit. I actually had to pull up what Max said. He had something all laid out here for me to read. So let me look. Okay. It's my own railways. The numbers are from 336 to 359. To start, you need to find a button in the panel inside the cab. It's invisible, but it's located at the start button. And in the panel, controls basic PT. It, and it really has brakes to stop in place as well, starting uphill with a load of about 10 cars. The only thing you may find not working is the speedo. But when I dupe it, it unwires itself from the RLC in the front bogey, so you have to wire it again to work. You use a random number generator from Magnum's pack. Okay. So let me go ahead and do that for him. Oops. Uh. Well, fuck. Probably didn't have to do that. There we go. And he said something about the front truck or something on the front unwiring itself. said something else about something unwiring itself. Oh, the Speedo. Ah, yeah, yeah, that, that would do it. Definitely. Okay. There we go. So that's wired up again. What the fuck is that? Oh, so the AC just turns on randomly. That's nice. Alright, touch something. Ah, yes, it does turn on by itself. That's kind of interesting. Hey, holy shit, my dude. Not bad. Not bad at all, Max. 28 E2s. See, everyone can take a note, guys. Max did it right. In terms of E2s per detail, Max did a phenomenal job. So he just has a generic fan here, too. He, he has them all separated with E2s. He didn't even have to do it, but he did. See, Max right here, guys, proved to you that you can still bring down E2 counts while still bringing the detail. Okay, so, in terms of everything else here, he says it's basic RLC PT. Uh, let's see here. So it was on the front truck, right? Oh, what the fuck? Oh. So yeah, it's literally just using PT beta. Just regular PT. Got a little fuel. You got a bell right there. It actually looks really nice. Dude, that, that's nice as hell. I like that. Look at the way he has the bell set up. I That looks fantastic. I guess the AC again. And it has a quillable horn, which is kind of cool. I like the skin. I, I like the gay pride. Well, maybe not gay pride, but it's just a joke, of course. I do like the way you have your skin set up with all the angles here. That does look hella badass, and I love it. I do like your materialing and your texturing. It's spot on, dude. You deserve a lot of credit there. Alright. So, what the fuck? Oh, shit! Okay, well, that solves that dilemma. You just tap it, I guess. There's a fuel cut there. Idling, it's using about 400-ish. You know what? That's pretty standard among PT, as uh, as well as PT2. So I'm not really going to count it against it. I think 
it's using a regular old stand, isn't it? Stand works. That's the wipers. Ah, so the wipers do have an actual animate thing. Whose wipers are these? Oh, they're Toaster's new wipers. I didn't even know Toaster made new ones, to be honest with you. And it only operates those. What's this for? Oh, so that's for the conductor side. Not bad. Yeah, you got a cab heater, you got a fridge. I guess the fridge is what's playing the sound, huh? Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. And, uh, so that's pretty cool. I like that. Let's get in here and just... Oh, R is the bell. That is a nice ass sounding bell. What's the horn? Okay, I do like that. That's a little interesting for the bell. So I'm noticing the fans seem to move. Whoa, that should be a spike up there, but that's probably because it's PT2. Ooh. Dynamic fan kicks on with the dynamics. All right, I gotta give it to you, Max. The skin, I'm very impressed with it. I do like some of the details. You definitely optimize those details into the skin very well. And I gotta give you credit for that. I'm definitely giving you an 8 out of 10 for detailed... Or, uh, fuck, sorry, stroke. In terms of uh, optimization per capita with detail. I do definitely have to mention out a couple of things with your detail, though. Um, optimization per capita is pretty good. You got your cons pretty low from what I could tell, but the big thing is your CPU timing on some of the things. There's a lot of things there that don't need intervals from what I could see, such as those old fans. I know for a fact those are based off the old fans that I made. A lot of people seem to have rebranded those fans, and I'm not exactly sure why, but people rebranded them. And they kind of took them from themselves, and they're not the greatest things out there, I guarantee you. And they use constant intervals. Same with a lot of the other things that I've made. But, besides that, I do really like some of the things you have in there. Like the fridge, that caught me completely off guard, hearing the fridge kick on. I thought it was the air conditioner for a second. You know, that, that stuff is fucking cool. So, in terms of that, I love it. So, that's a good 8 out of 10. Uh, handling characteristics, I mean, it's PT Beta. It feels like it responded properly, so it's typical among everything, 6 out of 10. And in terms of, uh, to the real thing, I mean, it's a made-up railroad, but hey, I definitely got to give you a lot of credit where it counts because the way that that thing's set up, it's pretty realistic to how, I mean, your dynamic fan kicked on with the dynamics when it warmed up the dynamics, and it seemed to have responded in the way that I definitely liked it, so I'm going to give you a good uh, 5 out of 10 for that. Because there are small things in there that really make a difference to the real thing. I do like your class lights. Gotta give you credit there. Alright, moving on to the next one. So, Soldats actually really surprised me um, on this. It, it gave me two versions. Soldats actually entered his own made LRI unit, which really struck me as a shock. Because he fucking went all out in this thing. Balls to the wall. Uh, Soldots is one of the guys who I know who still kind of puts up with Sapphire. I know he's kind of switching to PT2. It, I don't mind it, to be honest with him. That's his decision. But he's one of the few guys who has really made the most out of Sapphire from what I've been able to see in the past and prior. This is his submission result. 
So Sodots actually went all out with this, and the reason I say that is because first off, if you look towards the back here, he even included the TMC logo, which in case you guys don't know, LRI is actually a subsidiary from TMC, so the fact that he added this in is actually quite clever. All right, so as you can definitely see right here, he got the trucks on there. The trucks are pretty much an equal match, despite the fact that... Well, that was interesting. He even went as far as to put front... He put the American flag. Really went all out with this thing. However, the E2 count is ridiculously high. I mean, to be honest with you. But a lot of that's just because there's a lot of small details, like the American flag, and I believe... Okay, so that's all in one piece. Uh, E2, E2, I'm just poking around here to check all the E2s. So there's a lot of E2s here that don't have to be all-in-one, or could be an all-in-one, but that's alright. I gotta give it to him. The handbrake does work. Fire it up. I, I gotta give it to him. The cab looks fantastic. He's got a heater back there. even kept the old horn sound too. Yeah, just like the old ones. Oh, I broke my claggy too. Okay, there we go. It's still not correctly updating, but whatever. At least it's showing that now. I gotta tell you, though, the CPU timing is very high. And the fans are working. Next up on the list is Salty Wizard. Let's hope this loads in right. Alright, so Salty entered his P Penn Central unit, as you can see. Salty's a big Penn Central guy. I do like what he did there. He bent the logo right over the nose. Hey, hey, he did the right way, too. A lot of guys, when they bend the logo, they really don't give enough slack in there, and it kind of like Z fights or looks bad, but the way he did it actually is genuinely good. I don't actually know the way that Penn Central used to make these things. I mean, Penn Central is like one of those weird-ass, like, backwards anal companies while they were still kind of existing. I do know that he is running a much newer version of Sapphire. I think he's, like, running version... Yeah, Salty likes to put it up in front of the nose, I believe. Yeah, right behind the stand. Uh, he is running version 3.4, so he's got one of the latest versions here, so... He's even got the little temp gauges and stuff. Optimization per capita. We're sitting here idle with about 200 CPU, so that's pretty average. Especially for PT2, that's average. So. Breaker cuts. We'll set it to start. And I don't know if he's running my light controller. Let's find out. I don't think he has that. Oh, he is running my light controller. No shit. All right, that's cool. That's some good shit right there. We're going to have a good time. All right, let's start the damn thing. Yeah, I don't think we have that, though. But besides that, we've got everything we want here, so... Let me start the unit up here. I wonder if the light will dip down. Not bad. Nice. Is it going to go to a notch for a warm-up? That it is. I'm not doing that. It's doing that on its own. Smooth. Salty, you really outdid yourself with the transitions, my dude. And CPU timing is about 300. <laughs> Holy shit, that's so low. Holy fuck. 
Salty, you outdid yourself. Wow. All right, spiked up there. That's normal, though. All... I think Salty's timing is mainly so low because he's using some of the more later Sapphire E2s, and also, you see, his E2 count is significantly lower. A lot of his E2s, though, are just, like, decals, which, I mean, he could easily cut down the amount of E2s he has in his unit by simply adding them together. Let's see if his fans work. He should have working fans, knowing Salty. Wait for the unit to get hot enough. That's the temperature over here. So for sitting here idling, that is correct. Ah, yeah, he does have the fanny twos. See? I don't think it went anywhere because he's using an older one. Yeah. Run, run, right? Okay. This is my PT stand that I made. My sapphire stand. No fucking way! Ah, oh, that's awesome. I gotta give it to you, Salty. This is the most optimized per capita unit I've seen all day. You've got literally everything on here that could add excessive detail. Dimming lights for because of the excessive starter motor load. I notice you've got working fans that are using decent to nothing to none. Working brake shoes, working locomotive trucks, all that stuff. It's working fabulously. See, the shoes do work if you look closely. See them moving in? Stand still so you can see them moving in and out. The working brake shoes, what else does he have? Glass lights, the stand looks good. Highly detailed stand. I'm curious, does he have the actual 42 I gave him? The transitions sound gorgeous. I mean, gorgeous. Except for that dip right there. There was a, a heavy delay. Let's see, is there a fuel cut up this guy? No? Okay, I could probably just shut it off. Ah, he does have a cool little horn face on air pressure. There's the bell. And the bell stopped because there's no more air. Salty, man, I gotta give it to you. This is the most optimized per capita unit. Alrighty, next up we got Engineer Productions. We're gonna be doing his unit. Um, I definitely gotta mention a couple things, though. There are some missing things on my end, but I do like the logos. They look fantastic. I, uh, huh. I'm not really seeing any, um... I'm missing a lot of things here, but I definitely know what kind of logos are those are, so I'm not really that worried about it. Uh, I gotta give it to you, man. You've come a long way. Holy shit. 25 E2s. But there is a lot of CPU utilization at idle, so that's kind of a downfall. Oh, never mind. Maybe it's just going down. Maybe it's because stuff is calculating and still spawning in. But the E2 count is nice, my dude. Fantastic. You've got fuel fills. What else? Do we have ditch lights? We got ditch lights back here. Not bad. Not bad, not bad. I believe that he uses PT2. So what are we running here? Probably PT2. It's on the back of the fuel tank, right? Yeah, I have Gamma PT2, SD42. He's got Chessie's random air discharge. Monk's exhaust. Uh, generic stuff that you would find. Um... The trucks look like they don't move, but who knows? It wouldn't be the first time I've been surprised. I do like the texturing. The way it looks like a brand new unit for the most part, but I do like the way he's textured the lamps and stuff to the body. A lot of people don't do that. That's something I really like to do or like to see people do, but I haven't really been able to see a lot of people do it myself. I do like that he has the little stairs here. Are those integrated into the... E no, they're not integrated into the skin, but still. That's an... See, like, a lot of things here are integrated. Like, a lot of things here 
whoops, a lot of things here are integrated into the skin the way things should be. Okay, so we might as well start up. Prime start, so. Hold on, I gotta make sure this is set up right. Ha! It's got a regular head bike control. Nice. Although, I don't really see this guy moving, but okay. Selection switch, traction motor circuit. It's got his job. Oh, that's nice. Motors all in, out, out. That's awesome. And there's your emergency fuel cut off or really the shutdown. So hold on, let me prime it again and count it up here. Uh-oh. Now uh, what am I doing wrong here? Well, well you know, you got to have to have your fuel pump on. And these are not in use. Radio. Okay. Well, we need our fuel pump in order to run. I don't know why it's making priming sounds if we don't have a fuel pump switch on. Forgot PT2 does that. Oh, I broke the sounds doing that, didn't I? Yeah, I think I broke the sounds. That's on me. PT2 has an issue on TS200. Do the oddball tick rates, and it breaks the sounds. That that is completely normal. Unless it genuinely isn't playing the sound right now. Oh, it isn't. I should pull it off of it too fast. I gotta get it holding it. Run. All right, we need our engine run, generator field. What else? We need our. We need that guy out of there. We need our independent out. Well, I don't know if my independent's working. Not bad, not bad. Simple stuff. Although I definitely have to say the fucking CPU timing is very, very, very... Okay, maybe not that high, but it's still pretty high. I'm pretty sure he is working. Knowing engineer... Oof, man, that CPU timing. Let me rev it up here, get some more RPMs in there. It'd help warm the engine up and also get some more stuff set in shape. I was hoping the bell would move, knowing him. Alright, who's next? TTS GP28. Oh yeah, we already tried his. Alright, uh, Simon's GP40-2 is next. I had a problem starting this up. He, he supposedly patched something on it, it to, and it fixed it. So hopefully I won't look like a complete dumbass trying to start this thing up. I'd probably be wrong about it. Oh, there we go. Prime 1. Isolation. No more bullshit. Engine run, gen field brake cutting. Okay, the 
Let's hope this still isn't right here. Oh, that's why. Let's see, is he using the older style PT2 or is it... Yeah, it's set up like that, okay. That's his bell. So what's that dude over there? Because I don't hear an e-bell then. Nope, he's not using an e-bell, it's just a regular G-bell. Or a regular bell that you see right there. I have no idea how I did that. I have no idea what, how I did this one either. Well, that should have been common knowledge on what not to do. I have no idea how to adjust the lights properly. Probably for the best, though. 